Hello, welcome everyone to another episode of From the Dye Pot, where uh, I will bring to you a dye experiment from my kitchen from beginning to end. I should say, hello, I'm Nicole from Durab Creations. How are you? So for today's dye experiment, this is the third dye video that I have uh, produced and popped onto the interwebs. And today we are going to be experimenting with avocado. Now avocado is one of those dye ingredients that, you know, most people are able to, to gather in their kitchen. Um, this is the yarn that I am going to be dyeing today. So it is a stroll uh, fingering weight from Knit Picks. Um, it is a bare yarn, so it has not been dyed at all. I'm not over dyeing, I am just dyeing straight from bare stock. Um, it is a fingering weight, uh, so great for socks. And it is a 75-25 blend. So 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Now, the two skeins that I'm going to dye today are actually in the mordant pot. So I mordant all of my yarn before I begin my dye process, and I mordant that with alum and uh, cream of tartar. So I have two skeins right now. So there's the cream of tartar and there's the alum. I have two skeins right now that are soaking in the mordant pot. If you're interested in seeing that process from beginning to end, watch my very first dye video that's out there. And I went through that entire process, but that process doesn't change from color to color. So I figured I would only record that once. So avocado, let's talk avocado. So with an avocado dye, I actually produce um, two different types of dye, two different pots of dye. So the first one is made from the avocado pits. Um, these pits I'm going to be chopping into half and putting them into one of the slow cookers to release the dye. And from that uh, dye, I should get a peachy pink color. And then the other dye pot I do up with the peels from the avocados. Um, and that should give me a sandy, beigey brown color. Um, now, I do have a lot of dye stock here. It has been my experience with avocado that the more stock, uh, the more dye stuffs you put into the pot, the stronger the dye is, the brighter the dye color will come out onto the yarn. Now, have I eaten all of these avocados? Heck no. Um, I now have friends and family who are saving avocado, onions, carrot tops, all different kinds of pieces that I can use for dyeing, and they're saving it uh, for me uh, to be able to dye with. So uh, let me show you a little bit of my prep, and then we will move on to the next step in the process. I am going to step off screen and grab a knife, and we can cut open a couple of these avocado pits. All right, so I do keep my avocado uh, bits and pieces, actually most of my dye stock pieces, in the freezer. I have had these out on the counter trying to defrost them a little bit before I start. Of course, it's easier to chop up uh, unfrozen than frozen. So being very, whoop, <laughs> being very careful not to chop my fingers off, um, we will uh, chop one of those Pets. And that is what an avocado seed looks like on the inside. Um, and believe it or not, you can start to see um, how it does change color. Um, and that redness will come out into the dye. For the skins, all I do to prep the skins is break them into pieces. So it actually it works really well that they are um, frozen because I can just crunch them right within the bag. And for the most part, it'll break them up nicely. There's a couple in here that uh, aren't as frozen as the rest, and those I will rip by hand. But as you can see, when they're frozen, they just snap into pieces. I'm not sure if you actually have to do that with the skins, but I always have. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera off while I continue to chop and whatnot, and I will be back to show you it all going into the dye pots, and then it's simmer, simmer, simmer time. 
All right, so I've moved over my slow cookers. I do do all of my dyeing, my natural dyeing in my slow cookers. Um, I find it easier than tying up the stove. And it's something that I feel more comfortable putting a lid on and walking away from and not feeling like I have to be there supervising like I would if I was using the stove top. So in each slow cooker, um, I have uh, put the dye stock. So in this one, I have the uh, avocado peels. And as I said, we are expecting to get a sandy beige, uh, light brown color out of the avocado peels. Um, I also should say it's important to be cleaning off the pits and the peels before you dye with them. So before I put them in the freezer bags, I just take a, a, a fingernail brush and I get all of the green stuff off so that it is uh, nice and clean. Otherwise you get contaminated water and it's harder to, uh, to get all the particles out before you start your dye process. So in the bigger of the two slow cookers, I have the, uh, the avocado peels and about two uh, liters of water which I believe is about three quarts or three liters, I apologize. So three liters of just plain tap water. And that's all that goes into the dye pots to start off the process. So you can see I'm sticking my hands right in here because there is nothing but avocado pits or avocado peels and tap water. There's nothing in here that can harm me. Um, in the other slow cooker, I have my chopped uh, avocado pits. And I wanted to show you because you can start to see them oxidizing in the light. So you can start, or in the oxygen. So you can start to see the color changing happening within the pit. And that's the actual oxidization color. Oops! On the floor. That uh, changes the, uh, the color of the yarn. That one is oxidizing very nicely. All right, so I'm going to pour the water into this second slow cooker. Yeah, you will notice that I have everything labeled as dye. Um, my my uh, measuring cups, my spoons, everything. Now, I do natural dyeing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm using things that are completely edible. Um, so you always do want to make sure that your dye stock or your dye utensils are kept separate from food preparation utensils. These slow cookers are used for nothing but yarn dyeing. Um, also important to note that you always want to be uh, doing all of your dyeing in non-reactive containers. So no exposure to uh, metals other than stainless steel. Um, the reason for that, if you're using uh, aluminum or if you're using um, uh, non-stainless steel, that's going to affect the... Um, the the water and the the metal content of the water and it will change your dye colors now that's not always a bad thing um later on today well it'll be tomorrow actually we're going to be adding some iron um to one or both of these um to see what that does to the color as well as some uh uh ash water, which is almost like lye, to see what that does to maybe change up the colors just a little bit. Um, but yes, you want to make sure that in the prep stages, you're not using anything that's not stainless steel or ceramic glass, plastics, that sort of thing. All right, so all that needs to happen now is I'm going to plug in these slow cookers. I'm going to get them to come up to a slow simmer and I am going to simmer them and simmer them and simmer them and simmer them. So this process is going to take round about five to six hours to extract as much dye as possible out of the dye stuffs. The longer you extract the dye, again, especially with avocado, the stronger your dye stock is going to be. So that's the next process is just letting these slowly extract the dye using a, a low to moderate heat. All right, so I will stop recording and I will begin recording again to show you the different stages that the dye stock hits. All right, see you in a bit. Hello everyone. So it has been just about six and a half hours since we last spoke. Um, the dye pots have been simmering away here on the counter all afternoon. Um, in fact, we're about six, we're about five hours and no, six hours and 15 minutes into the process. So it's about time to turn off the dye pots. 
So the next step in the process, for avocado anyway, is to turn off the dye pots and then just let them sit. Now, you can let them sit until they cool down to room temperature, or, as I do, you can let them sit overnight. Um, you let them sit with the dye uh, material still in there, so I'm going to leave the, the avocado uh, peels in the one pot, and I'm going to leave the avocado pits in the other pot, and just let them sit in their own juices, so to speak, stew in their own juices um, overnight. So let me show you, though, where we're at with the dye. Um, I'm going to turn my dye pots off. Um, and I'll show you where we're at color-wise. Um, let me see what's going to be the easiest way to do this. I covet all those people who have like a, a, an island, because this would be much easier to show you if I had an island and I could put you on one side and I could be on the other. But alas, I do not have such a thing, so we will just have to muddle through. So I am going to use... A towel to take off the lids because these are good and hot um, as you would be if you had been summering away all day so I have some little glass jars you've seen these before and my handy dandy ladle which is only used for dye and I will show you first what has become um, of the avocado skins. So let me first show you um, the avocado skins themselves. So that is what they're looking like at the moment. Um, as you can see, there is a, a little bit of color change from a regular non-cooked for six and a half hours avocado skin, but not, not terribly much. They haven't broken down into mush or anything like that. So let me grab the ladle and I will ladle out a little bit of the liquid and show you the color that we are going to be potentially working with. Now it should darken up even a little bit more overnight. Ooh, that's warm. All right, there it is. So it is a, uh, a good brown tone. Um, yeah, it has some floaties in there, but we will drain out all of the dye materials um, tomorrow morning after it soaks overnight. So that is where we are sitting at the moment with the avocado peel. Now, I'll put the lid back on there and push it up out of the way. And we can take a little bit of a closer look, ooch, that was warm, at the avocado pits. So the pits themselves, let me reach in there and show you what we've got here. So those are the pits. They've become this, uh, this warm reddish pinkish color. Um, and the skins have come off the outside of the pit as well. So that is what the avocado pits look like after cooking away. And let me get another handy dandy little glass container. And I will ladle out a little bit of this liquid and show you. Ouch! That's warm. What that one is looking like. So that is the avocado pit. As you can see, it is, it is a different color than the skins. If we put them both together, I'm trying to show these to you without burning the heck out of my hands. Um, you should hopefully be able to see the difference in color that we are getting from those two. They do still look alike, so you can till, still see they are coming from the same dye stock, but it is a different color and it gives a very different result to the yarn when we put that in there tomorrow. So I am going to put these aside, let them sit and stew in their juices overnight, and I will join you back here tomorrow morning with the next step in the process of an avocado dye. See you tomorrow. All right, here we are. It is the next morning. 
Well, it's almost the next afternoon, to be honest with you. It is about 11 o'clock on the next morning, and we are ready to start draining our uh, dye stock. Um, it is... So everything has been soaking for overnight and we should have gotten some really really good strong color and now it is time to take the dye materials sorry for all this clanking <laughs> it is time to take the dye materials and separate it from the dye stock so for that process i'm going to need a strainer i am going to need something to catch the dye stock in which i am just going to rinse out The strainer is, uh, again, stainless steel, and it's a fairly fine mesh um, to help to uh, uh, strain out any of the, the chunks that are going to be coming out of the dye bath. So let's start out with the avocado skins. And as you remember, these uh, simmered away for about six and a half hours yesterday and then have been sitting for... Let me see, that was at about, I'd say that was at about 5, 12, 13, 18 hours. Um, so let us see what happens. So all I'm going to do is dump this directly into the strainer. All of the large chunks should come out. I hope you can see. The, what is left of the avocado skins. And again, I'm not too worried about reaching my hands right in there because all this is, is avocado skins. There's nothing in there that can harm me. Just avocado skins and water. And I am going to take that and move that out of the way. And it looks like we have gotten some really nice color. Let me grab one of my little glass jars and I'll show you what's come from the avocado skins. All right, back again. So I have my handy dandy little glass jars and my little scoop. And let me show you the color that we have achieved from the glass jar. Now I am seeing there's a whole lot of particulate matter left in this. So I am going to do a secondary strain of this using some paper towel. So first thing I'm going to do is rinse out Oh my goodness, rinse out and get rid of the, um, the avocado skins. Now, because it is just skins, it can go directly into my composting uh, bin. So I'm going to actually turn off the camera to do that. I will be right back. Hold on for one second here. Okay, so let's try this again. I am going to restrain for a second time the avocado uh, skins. So I've just really rinsed everything off. I got rid of the avocado skins and I put the uh, dye stock back into the, the container that was holding the avocado skins. Now what I'm gonna do this time to, to strain out a little bit more of the particulate matter, I am gonna use some paper towel and I'm going to put it into the strainer. The nice thing about this too is it's gonna give us a really good indicator of what our color is going to look like. Potentially. Uh, <laughs> that's the plan. All right, so through the paper towel and the strainer into the measuring cup goes the dye stock. That nice rich color. And that should really help to eliminate some of this excess particulate matter. All right. Oh yeah, I can see lots of it being left behind on the paper towel. And just let that drip through. Every last bit of that dye stock. And let's give this two seconds here. Nothing about this process is quick, as you can tell. Um, you need lots of room and 
you can't expect to run on any sort of a schedule. So I just want to show you the color of the paper towel because that should be a pretty good indicator of what color we can expect to get from this dye stock. And as you can see, it is a brownish tone, exactly as expected. All right, so I am just going to quickly rinse the crock pot before I return that dye stock to it. just to eliminate any of the particulate matter that may have still been in the crock pot itself. And now we're gonna repeat this process, but with the avocado skins. Now there should be less particulate matter with the avocado skin, or with the avocado pits, my mistake, I'm sorry. Um, just because of the nature of the pits as opposed to the skins. So let me just re-rinse. And we will go for this again. So no paper towel this time. We are just going to go strictly with the avocado pits. And as you remembered, I suspected we're going to get a peachy color out of the pits. Again, dump that in. You can see some of the skins that actually came off the pits. And there is a really good picture of the... Uh, avocado pits and what they look like. The interesting thing about these is they are soft. They are mush, mush, mush at this point. Let me just show you. So they are just mushable. They are soft. They have cooked down to nothingness. All right. So let me get this out of here. Now I have to say of all of the things that I have been cooking up in my kitchen, to die with, avocado is by far one of the most pleasant smelling. Um, it, uh, it, I, I don't know how to describe the smell. It is a very specific smell, but I find it quite pleasant, almost citrusy. So I'm going to take a little bit of this dye stock, put it into the glass container, and show you what we are dealing with here. All right, so yeah, no particulate matter left in this one. And as you can see, it is a much different color than we got from the skins. And this will give us a nice peach tone. All right, so I am going to transfer this back into the slow cooker once I get rid of the pits. And then I will meet you over on the counter where we will do a little bit of experimenting with some iron water and some... Uh, some uh, wood ash water with these dye stocks before we put in the yarn. I just want to see if we can get some variance in colors. All right, so I'm going to pause the video here and I will get reset up over at the other counter. See you in a few moments. Here we are back on the other side of my kitchen. <laughs> so I've gotten things prepared a little bit for us. As you can see, I am doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the two different dye stocks. So this is the dye stock that has come from the peels, and this is the dye stock that's come from the pits. So as you can see, especially when you're looking at it side-by-side, -side, there is quite a color variance here. So what's next on the agenda? Well, I am going to be experimenting a little bit with both wood ash and uh, iron water. So these are two uh, solutions that I have mixed up myself um, and they just live on the shelf in my, in my studio. This is wood ash solution and it's a base. So this gets into a little bit of chemistry. So all I've done is I've taken the white ash from a wood burning fire and put it into this jar. Um, actually, it was filled right to the top and then added water. And then you just let it sit and you let it sit and you let it sit. You let it sit. You let it sit. And eventually you get a, a base that comes out of this very similar to lye. So this is where things start to get a little bit more chemically, a little bit more, you need to exercise a little bit more caution, not diving right in there with your hands. And also when you're discarding um, youth solution that has either uh, wood ash or iron water, you should do it uh, not necessarily down your kitchen sink. Um, I dispose of mine safely outside um, in 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 my uh 
in my alley. Uh, as long as you're not concentrating it, it is fine to dispose it that way. Um, so all wood ashes, as I said, is the white ash from a fire um, that has water added to it and allowed to sit. And then we have iron water. Iron water is a little different. Wood ash, you'll notice that I don't mix up. Um, I do every once in a while and then let it resettle. Um, for the iron water, you want to keep mixing this up. Um, so iron water is actually kind of a neat process. Um, what this is, is a couple of uh, old rusty uh, nails that are uh, put into the jar. And then to that, I added about uh, one third uh, white vinegar and the rest water. And then you just let it go and you shake it every couple of days. Um, and eventually you get this dark brown ooky stuff with a nice rust layer on the top. This is ready to use. Um, so whereas this is a base, this is an acid and it will affect the dyes differently um, depending on which one you put in. So I'm going to open up my iron water and I'm going to open up my wood ash solution. So I am going to start with the wood ash and my little measuring. Now, as you can see, this is one ladle went into each of these little containers. And I am going to use one uh, spoon of wood ash solution into there and into there. Um, and we'll see what that does to the colors. We should see something fairly quickly. And I can see that there is some color changing there. Um, do this right back up again. There we go. So we can see that yeah, it has definitely made a richer color in both sides. I'm just going to give my little measuring spoon a bath in water before I attempt the same experiment with my iron water. All right, now iron water you probably don't need to use quite as much of, <laughs> and the effects should be pretty dramatic. People put iron in, in dyes to sadden it, um, to darken it. Um, you usually get grays and blacks and whatnot by adding iron to your water, or to your dye stock. So, now I am going to grab a piece of paper towel. I'm going to reach right across the camera. I apologize. All right, got my paper towel. All right, I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel and then we can do a little bit of a dip test. So, first into the peel and into the wood ash solution into the iron water solution, dramatically different, and then into the original. So you can see the difference that the different uh, additions, the modifiers are making. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Now you'll notice I haven't protected my countertop with anything. That's because I've got ugly old laminate countertops that I would like to have replaced one day. So I'm not too concerned about it. If you were doing this, you had beautiful countertops, granite or whatnot, perhaps putting some uh, uh, protection on the countertop would also be appropriate. All right, so let's see what's happened with the pits. So that's pits with wood ash. That is the pit with iron water. And that is the pit unmodified. So let me compare these two. So those are the iron waters. Those are unmodifieds. And those are with wood ash. So Now's where we get to play a little bit. So I am not sure. I think I am just going to reserve the wood ash for the time being, the wood ash solutions. We might do some speckling with that later on. 
I want to keep them separated. Hmm. Let me see. I'm going to put pit on that side and skin on that side. Okay. And these ones I will put with their co-patriots on either side. Now I am very interested in brightening up these dyes a bit. So I think I am going to add the wood ash to both solutions or one solution. Hmm. This is when it gets a little bit tricky. You know what? I am going to add the wood ash to both. I like what it did to both of it. So let's see what we can do. So I'm going to pour this wood ash solution back in to its pot since we're going to add wood ash to the mix anyway and the wood ash back to this one as well. Okay, now I'm going to pull over that wood ash and I'm going to add a little bit more because I'm dealing with the volume that I'm dealing with. So again, I need to rinse this off because the last thing I used this for was iron water. Let me just rinse that quickly into my reserve water and I am going to add, so it's already had one, two, three, four, five. So I am going to add five into there. And this one also has had one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so we've added five tablespoons of wood ash solution to each of the dye stalks. And going forward, I am gonna use the scoop in the pits. Give that a stir. And I am going to use the flat wooden spoon in the peels. Oh, that is a beautiful color. It's actually almost a reddish. All right. So now we're going to add in the yarn. So let me just get reset up here and we will start the yarn processing. All right. So here we go. Um, if you recall, I mortinted the yarn yesterday. And here it is. It is, just to recap, it is a 75-25, so 75% super wash, wash merino and 25% nylon. And I am doing up two skeins today and they are both a fingering weight. Um, I have taken this out of the mordant water and rinsed them thoroughly. They are still damp. You wanna add damp yarn into your dyes um, to allow the uh, dye to adhere to the yarn best. So I am going to plunge this one in, holy Toledo's, very gently. Now everything I do when it comes to dyeing yarn is done with a gentle hand. I want to make sure that I am treating the yarn with the most respect I can. Um, everything is done slowly and everything is done gently. Um, I believe that way um, the yarn will react best to the processes that I'm putting it through. All right, I am gonna do the same thing over here. Again, slightly damp, um, but rinsed from its mordant. Move this out of the way now. And bring this crock pot a little bit closer. All right, and lower that one in as well. Oops, caught up on the countertop there. All right. And the dye does immediately start adhering to the yarn. All right, so now what I'm going to be doing is plugging these slow cookers back in 
on, and on a low to medium heat, I am going to bring them back up to temperature. I'm going to let them simmer for about an hour and then I'm going to shut them off. And then you know what I'm going to do? Absolutely. I'm going to let them come back down to room temperature gradually all on their own. Then we will take a look and see if we want to do any further modification to the yarn. So let's take a quick peek before we uh, turn on the heat and see what's already happening in the dye pot. So this is what is happening in the peels. And this is what we have happening in the pits. So as you can see, we already do have some color adhering to the yarn and it's only going to get darker and brighter and more vibrant. All right, I'm going to put those back in their respective dyes, tamp them down just a little bit, trying to get all the air out of the yarn as possible. Air pockets also will create unevenness. Um, now, the natural dye process, I personally have found, does tend to create um, tonal effects. It's, I, I have found it very difficult to get a flat color onto the yarn, but I'm okay with that because I actually prefer tonals. So, all right, I am going to uh, break away here and I will bring you back uh, later on when it's time to decide whether we're going to further modify with the iron water or whether we're happy with the colors the way they are. So I'll see you in a half a day or so. All right. Hello again. So it is now about four o'clock in the afternoon and I am happy with where the dyes are sitting. So I have taken and pulled out some of the dye out of the, the stock pots to show you where we are sitting at. So the, uh, the dye that was done with the avocado skins, this was the color of the dye when we last uh, talked. And this is now what's left in the dye pot. So it is nearly exhausted its color. And the same with the avocado uh, pits. Uh, this was the color of the dye stock um, when last we spoke, and this is currently the color that is left in the dye pot. All the rest of the color has been absorbed into the yarn, so this is a good thing. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting. So as you can see, I've got two other containers sitting out here. Slowly but surely, all of my uh, never used kitchen wares are becoming part of my dye studio. So I am going to take the skeins out of their current yarn baths where it is quite hot. Um, as I have just turned off the heat sources. Let me see, I'm going to unplug them as well. And let me see here. All right. So I will start with the avocado skins. And this is the color of the skein as it stands. And I am just going to transfer that, ooh, hot, 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 into this Pyrex dish. Um, it's going to lay it out in the dish, sort of going around in a circle. There we are. If you hear growling in the background, that is not a demon, it is my dog. Although maybe it is my demon dog since it is Halloween. All right. And I am going to do the same thing now on the other side with the skein of yarn that we are dyeing with avocado pits. Try and get this so that we're not tangling as we go. And there we go. That is the avocado pit yarn. There we go. Nice. All right. So as you can see, they are two very different colors. We have one that is more of a 
peachy color and one that is more of a brown color. Now, as you recall, before we put the dye, uh, the yarn into the dye pots, we did a little bit of experimentation with the dye stock and some iron water. So I am now going to further experiment with that using a syringe. So this is just a, a, a syringe that actually I got from the dentist. Um, so it doesn't have any needle or anything on it. It's just a, a sucker upper and a squirter outer. So this was the dye that we uh, modified with iron water that came out of the peels. And I am going to give that a quick little stir. Hmm, where is my little spoon? Can't find my little spoon, so I will use my thermometer. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give that a quick little stir up, make sure it's still well mixed, and then I am going to take some of that dye up into the syringe, and I am going to hand speckle this yarn with the iron water, and just drip, 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 drip all over this skein. And what that is going to do is give us some dark speckled spots on our yarn. And because it is the avocado peel, it will be the same tones, just saddened with iron water. Now I'm going to take that, hope you can see that speckling starting, I'm just going to move it around a little bit in the dish so that we can get towards the other side a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing. All right. Speckle, speckle, speckle. So the same way that people who die with acid dyes can sort of play and hand paint. We can do the same thing with our natural dyeing techniques. All right, so I think that is going to be fairly speckly. And again, the speckles that you get from natural dyeing techniques are not going to be as intense as the speckling that you would get um, when you're dealing with acid dye. All right. So now for the skein that we did with avocado pits, I was wondering if we could try a different experiment. You know what? This is the fun part of yarn dyeing for me is just the playing around part. Never quite know what I'm going to get. I'm always going to try new things. So this was the uh, dye that was uh, saddened um, with iron water um, from the uh, avocado pits. And I think with this one, I'm just going to pour a little bit into the pan and see what happens. Who knows? Who knows? Um... Yeah, so that should soak up nicely. Um, and it'll give us some sort of effect. I don't know what kind of an effect, but I think we're going to find out. Oh, I got a little bit on the top there. That's all right. We'll go with it. All right, so I am going to leave these to cool down in, the, in their pans. And then I will catch up with you again when we go to rinse out the skeins and see what we're left with. All right, see you soon. All right, so we are at the rinse phase of today's dye experiment. So um, both of the uh, skeins that we've dyed up today are, well, over the past two days, are ready to go. And I am going to start out by rinsing them, then conditioning them, and then hanging them to dry. And then we will see what our final product is. So I'm just gonna be rinsing them in the stainless steel sink using plain old tap water. So let's get the water going. And we will start with our speckled skein, the skein that was done with the um, avocado peels. And I'm just gonna pop that in the water. 
get it good and saturated. And then I am going to squeeze out the water and do it again until the water runs clear. Now, as you saw, the dye stock, um, most of the color had absorbed into the yarn, which is a good sign. Um, and it does not look like we're losing much color out of this at all. So I am quite happy with that. And that is how it is looking so far. So not sure how well it's going to show up on the camera, but we can still definitely see some of our brown, our, our darker speckles in that yarn. All right, and I'll pop it into the other sink. And let us grab the, uh, the skein that was in the pie plate. And if you remember, we just poured the dye into the bottom of this one, the other dye, to see what would happen because, you know, experimentation is part of the game. And it looks like, ooh, we got some, some dark splotches for sure. All right, so I'm going to rinse that again, just plain old tap water. Always amazes me. Uh, we have created permanent dye out of food scraps. All right, so I'm going to saturate that completely, squeeze the water out of the yarn, and do that one more time, and that should be good. And then we'll put it in the sink and allow it to condition with some wool wash and the other skein of yarn. All right, so once again, we will squeeze out Things are looking like they're running pretty clear now, so I'm going to pop them both into the other sink and let that fill up with lukewarm water. To that water, I am going to add some wool wash. So as always, I just use the same wool wash that I wash all of my wool garments in. And we'll put a little bit of that in there. Now, the reason why I do this um, isn't necessarily to get any of the dye out because as we've seen, the water is running clear. But what this will do is recondition the yarn. Um, it's, it's been a pretty harsh life for this yarn so far. <laughs> um, it has boiled and toiled and troubled and it, now it needs to relax and it needs to be reconditioned. So one of the things that the uh, wool wash will do is add back in some of the oils, the natural oils that have been stripped out of the yarn through all of the processing that it's gone through. So I've filled that sink about, well, just so that the yarn is completely covered. I'm going to turn that off. I am going to let this yarn now soak for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I will rinse it out and hang it to dry. And I will show you, once it's dry, our final product. So that'll probably be tomorrow. So this is turning into a three-day event. Alrighty, we'll see you later. Hello. And welcome back. So it is the next day. It is actually November the 1st today. So this entire process started October the 30th, um, went through yesterday, Halloween, October the 31st. And now I'm showing you the final product here on October, or November the 1st. Hope everybody's Halloween went well. So these are our two skeins that we have been in the process of dyeing over the past two days. So two different colors have come out of the dye. Um, this is the avocado pit. Um, and as you can see, some of the speckling um, that we did with the iron water. And this is the avocado skins. Um, it does have speckling as well. It is actually more subtle than the pooling speckling that we did on the pits. So let me unbundle these and I will give you a closer look as to what the skeins ended up looking like. So to recap, this is fingering weight yarn. It is a 7525. It's actually from Knit Picks. It is their stroll fingerling. And as you can see, we do have some splotches of the gray color that um, have been a product of that iron water uh, modifications that we did. And let me open up the avocado skin. Now, as you can see, they are, they are, they would go together. Um, and I su suspect that's because they are from the same, the same plant. Um, but they are two different colors. Um, this uh, brown is a little different and the peach is a little different than I've gotten in the past from the uh, avocado. And I believe that was the, um, 
the addition of the uh, the uh, the wood ash solution that slightly changed the colors. Here you can see some of the uh, the variegation speckling on the the browner tone. Um, now to show you what we had originally started with, to show you how much color actually was taken up into the skeins, this is a undyed skein. So this is a great indicator of how much color actually did get taken up into the yarn. And I think that's pretty impressive. Um, so any of the yarns that you're seeing me dye up here are actually available through my Etsy page. If you're interested, come on over and take a look. I do occasionally poach some yarn off of there for my own use, but I do list everything. Um, there's not a whole lot of the fingering weight. I have dyed mostly to this point um, a sport weight. Um, but before I go, I just wanted to show you one more thing. So... As I said, I have dyed uh, with avocado in the past, and I do have some other examples. So from the avocado skins, let me just move the pit out of the way. These are two other skeins that I have dyed with avocado skins. So this one is much... Um, this. This one is much lighter in color. This one is significantly darker in color. And if we compare that to what we did yesterday, I do see a little more of a reddish tint to the skins from yesterday. And I suspect that has a lot to do, as I said, with that uh, um, wood ash solution. So it definitely pulled more of the reds out. All three of these skeins, well, these two are currently listed on Etsy, and this one will be shortly. Now let's do the same thing with some of the avocado pit um, experiments I've been doing. So this is the one from yesterday. Um, these two are both a, uh, a sport weight yarn. So this is one sort of a paler color of, of the avocado pit. And this one came out incredibly dark. I'm very proud of this one. Um, so those are three different tones that have come from avocado. I do feel like the one we did yesterday has a slightly more tan to it. Um, it's almost like the, uh, the ash, the, the wood ash solution pulled the two colors closer together than they would be if they had been left on their own. But as I said, it's, that's the experimentation. And that's to me, the fun part of playing with natural dyes in the kitchen. So there we have it. We have our successful avocado dye. Um, I would like to take this moment also to say if natural dyeing is something that you've been interested in um, pursuing, by all means, avocado is a great way to start. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot you can do wrong with avocado as long as you take it slow um, and work up uh, treat your yarn gently, take it nice and slow, give your yarn lots of time to absorb color, lots of time for the color to come out of the, the dye stock and then to be absorbed, you should get some great results. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. If this content is something that you have enjoyed, please, by all means, hit the thumbs up, um, give it a like, comment down below, let me know that you've enjoyed this. And as I said, all of the skeins of yarn you see here are available for purchase on Etsy if you would care to have some of this famous yarn in your hands. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.